Hi, I'm Jerry Boyer. This is the Eagle Investing Network. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Let's talk about inflation, uh, which is a hot topic because inflation is hot. And we're looking now at some data from the Congressional Budget Office that was re released recently. Um, and they've got some past inflation data and they've got some forecasts about inflation. So up down is inflation as a percent. Higher is more inflation, lower is less inflation. By the way, it's almost never zero, uh, at least like for a year. These are annual projections. Um, so we seem to have a policy of always having inflation. Uh, so we have two numbers here. One is regular, inf re regular inflation. So this is the CPI, that's the dark arrow or the uh, dark line, chains and in price index. Um, and this is the overall and this is the core. The orange is the core. Um, so actually, this isn't CPI. This is PCE. This is what, all right, Jerry, you're getting technical. It's not that bad. Um, CPI is calculated by saying, let's take a bucket of what Americans typically um, buy in any given day at the grocery store or any place else. Here's the bucket of what Americans typically buy. And that bucket doesn't change. The prices change, but what's in the bucket doesn't change very much. Now, there's something that happens when prices start to get too high. When the CPI changes, people say, well, normally I'd buy ground beef, but have you seen the price of ground beef? And I'm not, I'm not talking theoretically here. Have you seen the price of ground beef? It's going up a lot. So what do you do? Well, you might buy ground turkey or ground chicken or ground pork instead and those tend to be lower in price. So you're substituting. That's called a substitution effect because you're substituting. Well, what happens is if you switch from ground beef to ground chicken, CPI recognizes the increase in the price of ground beef. But this one, the PCE, the one that the Fed uses to say, are we doing well or not? They don't count the ground beef as much. As we switch over to ground chicken, they say, oh, well, ground beef is going to get less weighting in our model. So they're acting as if you're just switching, not because of inflation. They're counting that not as inflation. You're just, you just suddenly have a hankering for ground chicken. Um, and what we see in this data, and let's take a look, is in general, the core, um, which takes energy and food out, is lower than the other one. But I can tell you, we don't have the data in front of you here, but this the one that the Fed uses to say, are we passing or failing, tends to be lower than the CPI, which is the one that we're used to. So that's the one that says if ground beef goes up 20%, that's a 20% increase in the price of ground beef, rather than this one, which the Fed uses, which says if, tw if ground beef goes up 20%, we don't count ground beef as much. Uh, so that's an easier bar for them to jump over. Um, so Either way, so this is how they're measuring themselves. And they're assuming here that inflation is going to be about 2% for the foreseeable future. Do you believe that? I don't believe it. Markets don't believe it. If you look at market indicators, uh, certain things like the Treasury inflation protected securities are very good at forecasting uh, inflation, better than government bureaucrats, gold prices don't seem to be forecasting low inflation, but their assumption is that inflation is going to return to normal. So all the forecasts about the debt growing and the deficits growing and interest rates, we're going to see that in a moment, staying relatively low, all of those are based on a Goldilocks scenario about inflation. But if the Goldilocks scenario is wrong, things are worse than the projections and the forecast that we've been looking at. You can draw your own conclusion. In my opinion, the Goldilocks inflation scenario is not the base case. It's not the most likely. Um, so you want to take that into account as a headwind in American markets, as an issue to take account with regular treasuries, as opposed to inflation protected treasuries, which are a different animal entirely that are worth talking about, and also inflation hedges. This is what, this is what the experts think. Inflation is no problem. Um, well, if the experts are wrong, and they've been wrong a lot, uh, you might want to make your bets accordingly on inflation hedges, things like commodities, things like inflation protected securities. And we're going to do whole things, whole dives on those and on gold uh, and other things that um, and international markets, which tend to do better when U.S. inflation is high 
Um, there are places to hide from inflation. They're not perfect, uh, but um, if there's an inflationary outlook, let me say the government is out of touch with the reality. Does that surprise you? I'm Jerry Boyer. This is the Eagle Investing Network. Thank you for joining us. Make sure to subscribe and join us next time.